From athletes to authors, entertainers to innovators, we connect with those who help shape our culture. Join us in revealing stories of their lives and backgrounds, their triumphs and tragedies that molded them into who they are today. Authentically off script and personally illuminating, this is Audibles with Jason Scarborough. Coming up next on Audibles, Keith Carter. Well, first of all, it's it's good to see you, man. It's always good to see you. Been about three years since the last time we did one of these, right? Yeah, time flies. We're glad to glad to be back with you. Yeah. So, the last three years, there's been a lot that's going on since the last time we did one of these uh, here at Ole Miss. Athletics have you know really made a lot of high marks. So, through the eyes of Keith Carter, what's the last three years been like? Uh, well, like we were talking off air, it's been a little bit of a blur, you know, it's, it's gone by fast. Um, like you said, a lot of, a lot of good things, um, won a couple national championships, which we're really excited about and, um, you know, hired some new coaches and, um, you know, finished out COVID and NIL became a thing and the transfer portal became a thing and, and all of that. So, uh, you know, our world has changed a lot, but it's been good. You know, I think for us, um, uh, we're all about, you know, trying to, to face those challenges head on and and try to find solutions, and uh, that's what we're trying to do right now. But uh, it's been good, and uh, we hope we're just getting started. Yeah, we were talking about how the last time we sat down, we didn't even know if we were going to have a football season before that 2020 season. And, again, that seems like a blur. But, you know, what are the lessons when you look back at that now? We're we're glad that that time uh, in society is gone, at least. But what lessons did you learn as an athletic director and just personally uh, from that time? That A lot of uncertainty going on during that time. Yeah, you know, I think, you know, during that time, everybody was just kind of working on whatever real-time information that they had. And, you know, we were, uh, there was no manual, there was no, you know, guide, playbook, whatever, whatever you want to call it. But um, I think that it showed that when you, when you kind of roll your sleeves up and everybody works together, you know, you can accomplish a lot, even in those tough times. And, you know, I give the commissioner, uh, Commissioner Sankey, a lot of credit um, during that time period. You know, there was a uh, another conference that said they were not going to play football, and, and we said we are. And, you know, all of a sudden, then everybody could play football. You know, everybody figured it out. So, uh, you know, Greg is, is a guy that's always thinking three and four, you know, steps ahead. And um, that was a, that was a, you know, showed great leadership for him and, and our, our conference to, to step out there and say, hey, we're going to figure this out. We understand, you know, this is a serious issue. But we also understand that some people need some good things in their in their lives, you know, and these young people want to play and they want to push through it. And so uh, that was really cool that that, that happened. But uh, yeah, just, you know, I think the other thing is, um, you know, being remote, um, we learned about communication, you know, and, and how you've got to work really hard at that uh, when you when you're not in the same building all the time. And so, um, you know, I think we, we got closer in some ways and in some ways, uh, you know, we, we drifted apart just because we couldn't be together. But uh, we found a way and. Uh, you know, Zoom. Uh, Zoom became a, a really big thing in our lives, and uh, you know that's a tool we still use today. But um, it was good, and again, I think that leadership that our, our conference showed, you know, allowed us to to push forward, and, and that was a really cool thing. Interesting about that COVID year, 2020. Ole Miss had to date one of its best years athletically in the Learfield Directors Cup rankings. At that time, it was your highest ranking of 22, I believe pacing, outpacing the previous ranking. I think it was like number 38, something like that. How in the world did you guys excel <laughs> in the middle of a worldwide pandemic? You guys have one of your best years in Ole Miss athletics. How did you excel during that time? Well, you know, I, just, I think we got to give a lot of credit to the student athletes um, and the coaches. Uh, but the student athletes, you know, just you think about how all that went down with COVID. Um, we were actually at the SEC basketball tournament. Uh, it was our spring break here at Ole Miss. So a lot of our Students and student athletes were kind of displaced doing their thing for spring break. And, you know, they get a call that says, hey, don't come back. And uh, we'll, we'll let you know, you know, how we're going to move forward. Well, you know, classes go online. A lot of our student athletes, they don't have laptops. They don't have access to Wi-Fi. A lot of different things, a lot of challenges. Um, and they just worked through it. You know, they persevered. And, um, you know, I think when they got back that next year, um, you know, following that summer, and we were going to play football, and we were going to play volleyball and soccer in the fall and do those type of things, um, I think they were just so happy to be back, you know, and they were, they were glad to be back around their teammates, glad to be back in Oxford and on campus. Um, and I think they just locked in, you know, they really locked in. I think the time away from the sport, you know, it showed them how much their, their sport meant to them. Um, and, you know, I think with, with everything, all of the, 
precautions you had to take, the masking, the social distancing, the way we traveled. Um, I think they all just, again, locked in and focused on, on the task at hand and you know, everybody performed really well. So it was great. That year we finished 22nd. The following year we finished 20th um, in the Learfield Directors' Cup. So a couple of really good years there. This past year, not, not quite as good, but uh, we're looking forward to, to cranking it up here pretty soon. There's a lot to be proud of during your time as athletic director here, but that year, 17 of the 18 athletic programs here made postseason play. I know there's we're going to get to that. There's a lot to be proud of, but from your chair, how proud of you? How proud of that year are you specifically? Well, it was it was a big year, and again, one we were just happy to be competing, you know, to, to be out there. Um, and then for 17 of the 18, you know, to make it into the postseason, um, you know, it just shows that everybody was locked in. You know, everybody got there and, and not only did they make it, but some of our teams made deep runs. You know, our, our women's golf team wins a national championship. We had some others, you know, do the Sweet 16. I think soccer made Sweet 16 that year. Um, so they, they win and not only made the postseason, but perform well once they got there. And so, um, you know, that's what it's all about for us. Obviously, we want our student athletes to come here and get a great education, a meaningful education. Uh, but we want them to compete and win at the highest level. And we know that's why they, they come. They want to, you know, be in the SEC. They want to be you know, at the, you know, the, the pinnacle of, of where we are in college athletics and for them to go out and perform in, in the biggest moments, that's pretty cool. One of the things, I mean, you were early on the job last time we sat down, and one of the first things that you had to do, unfortunately, was go to a close friend, Matt Luke, was the head football coach at the time, and, and make a change, and that change was Lane Kiffin, obviously. How do you shift? I'm curious. I've been wanting to ask you this. You've got to shift from this really difficult moment with a friend, a personal friend, too. And then you have to shift to, like you said last time, I'd like to veg out on that, as you said, but i got to go find the next guy. And so, unfortunately, that's a part of being an athletic director. As you know, you just got to, hey, you might let someone go and have to let them go, and you got to shift and be ready to go pitch the next person. That, that's got to be difficult to shift from that set of emotions to that next set of emotions, how do you do that? Yeah, it's really hard. And, you know, we, we had another situation this past year with Coach Davis, you know, where you have to make a change there to a you know, really good person, did everything the right way. We just didn't just didn't win enough games. And, you know, you, you go in and, and, you you know, at that moment, you kind of have to separate the personal side of it and, and you got to, you know, work more on the professional side. And, and Kermit was great. Matt Luke was great. Um, but it is hard because you you know you're making those decisions and and you know it not only affects the coach and his family but it affects assistant coaches and their families you know support staff and their families um, you know a lot of those people don't have three and four and five year contracts so they're looking for a new job the next day um, so it's tough it's really tough but you know again that's where you have to go in and you know try to do those things the right way try to you know say the right things and and be professional and empathetic and, and all of that. But then literally it, it shifts over. And, and a lot of times, if, if you know you're going to make that change, even before you have that conversation, you're already behind the scenes, you know, looking at what could be next. And so uh, obviously brought in Coach Kiffin. And, um, you know, that's been, uh, it's been a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, he's won a lot of games and brought a lot of interest. And he really galvanized our fan base, which has been cool. Um, and then obviously Coach Beard coming in, you know, after Coach Davis. So um, it's tough. Um, you know, that's probably the hardest part of the job, honestly. You know, when, when you got to walk into somebody and that you know um, has really done almost everything right and it just didn't quite work out, you know, and let them know you got to make a change. But um, you know, I think as you, it never never gets easier. But I do think as as I've been in it a few more years, you realize, hey, we got to do what's best for the for the university, for the athletics department. Um, and a lot of times, you know, when you have those conversations, the coaches they don't like it, but they understand, and um, you just try to do it the best way you can. Yeah, I love what Lane Kiffin said when, when we had our interview with him. He said, if you coach, you're going to get fired at some point. That's just part of it, and you kind of understand that, unfortunately, going into it as a coach. Speaking of Lane, you guys didn't really know each other that well uh, last time we talked, and, of course, now, obviously, you guys know each other pretty well. So what's your relationship like with, with Lane Train today? It's good. Um, you know, Lane, Lane has been great. Um, you know, Lane is a, the type of guy you do have to spend time with. You got to get to know him uh, for him to kind of open up to you. Uh, but he has, and it's been good. I think this past year was, was probably Lane's best year in Oxford from a standpoint of just, you know, not only football wise and, and the program, but just, you know, personally, you know, his, his daughter moved here and did her senior year here and she's coming to Ole Miss this year. Um, and you can see that in him. You know, you can see that, that he's, He's uh, figuring some things out and, and you know, realizing, that, hey, there's some, there's some things that are really important to me that are outside of football. And that was so awesome to see. And 
um, you know, I just, I love seeing that his kind of not only professional growth, personal growth. And, uh, you know, he's a fun guy to be around. He really is. You know, he's, he's always going to call you with some quirky idea or something that's, you know, he even says that we don't go outside the box. We create a new box. Right. And, and he does quite often, almost every day. You know, there's something that, that he's trying to, to figure out there and, and making his staff be aggressive and proactive. But that's what we have to do here. Not only in football and all of our sports, we encourage all of our coaches to, hey, you know, we understand we're never going to maybe recruit the, the five stars every year. Our alumni base is a little smaller than some others. Our budget isn't quite as big. So guess what? We got to find creative ways to do things. And, and I appreciate when coaches do that. Okay. I'm not asking for specifics, obviously, but the last time he called with a quirky idea that that just made you, I don't know, laugh or go, oh, come on. I mean, not asking for specifics, obviously, but has there been a time like that where you just kind of went, really? Or kind of made you laugh a little bit? Has there been a time like that? Yeah, I mean, they happen all the time. Uh, and, yeah. and, you know, the thing about it is, is that, you know, Lane is not a guy, though, that's just going to throw some idea out. He, it's well thought out most of the time. And he, he usually has a reason uh, for why he thinks that's the way we need to do it and why that best fits our program. Um, and I would say for the most part, we find a way to, to do some version of it. You know, we, we don't always you know, end up exactly where he starts out or, or where, you know, whatever. But um, I think it's important that he continues to do that. And, you know, you, you just look at a lot of stuff on social media, a lot of the things that we do that are a little different. Um, but again, we have to have a unique personality and, and you know, that identity here at, at Ole Miss to, to kind of stand out and maybe bridge the gap with some of these bigger programs. And, um, you know, what I've learned is, while the, at my initial reaction may be to, to, to laugh or giggle or whatever and say, you know, what are we doing? To really dive into why he wants to do that or other coaches want to do it because, again, they're trying to create that, that advantage that, that maybe we don't have with some other programs. Don't go anywhere. Audible's returns in a moment here on the Spirit Media Network. When life is unpredictable, choose Express Care Summerall to get the medical help you need. We're the only clinic in Summerall open seven days a week. We also offer the convenience of drive through accessibility and walk-ins with no appointment necessary. Our nurse practitioners, Sarah Don Locke and Kobe Smith, welcome you to our location on Highway 42 next to Fox's Pizza. Find your new primary care provider, Express Care Summerall, where your health care matters. Wendy's new breakfast two for three is so good, the crew is giving every combination code names. I got that sauce biscuit and some tay tays. More formally known as sausage biscuit and small seasoned potatoes. Bis squared. Egg and cheese biscuit and sausage biscuit. Two biscuits. I'm impressed Tyler knew what squaring was. Cup of double java. It's two coffees. Cup of double java. No matter what you call it, Wendy's breakfast is that breakfast. Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's new two for three dollar piggy bundles. For those on the go, we give you audibles with Jason Scarborough, the podcast. What are we listening to? Are we listening to a playlist? Are we listening to a podcast? What a great question. Listen to our intimate interviews with guests on your favorite podcast platforms, including iTunes, Google Play, Amazon Music, Spotify, TuneIn Radio, and so many more. Do you ever look back and say, you know, my life, the story could have ended up differently had it not been for your grandparents? In incredibly uh, different, yeah. for sure. Plus, you'll hear behind-the-scenes commentary on each guest, interview preparation, location, and so much more from Jason himself. Do you have a, uh, a favorite Coach Bowden story uh, that you can share with us? I can tell you this. What you see with Bobby Bowden is what you get. Mm. Check out Audibles with Jason Scarborough, the podcast, on any of these popular podcast locations and hit subscribe, download, and enjoy. Now, back to the show. Name, image, and likeness. This was really starting to, to sort of nose its way to the surface last time we talked. And now it seems like it's in full bloom, good, bad, and, and the ugly with NIL. Could you have foreseen it, I don't know, kind of playing out like it has so far? You know, I think we were all, um, the ADs, the, the, the presidents, the coaches, um, we were all a little bit worried that it could end up here. Um, you know, I think that NIL is a really good thing um, at its core and, and what it's intended to be. I mean, our student athletes should have the opportunity just like any other student to go out and, 
and make money and use their name, image, and likeness to, to do things. Um, so I'm all for that and, and opportunities for student athletes. You know, what it's, what it's turned into is, is, is tough. You know, I mean, there's just, there's a lot of money floating around and you know, a lot of times it's, it's become less about market value and more about roster value. And, you know, I don't know that it's sustainable. You know, our collective has done a fantastic job, Walker Jones and his team over there, uh, working along with our Athletics Foundation, Denson Hollis, Matt McLaughlin, um, you know, working with donors, communicating and different things. Um, but at some point, donors are tired. You know, they get tired and, and they, have, they have fatigue and, you know, they're getting pulled from so many different directions, Ole Miss, and then they've got their church and they've got other charities and different things that they support. And as I mentioned before, we don't have the largest donor base to start with. So um, I just, I'm not sure that the current model is sustainable in the long term for multiple reasons. Um, and that's why we're really working hard to find some type of national solution, whether it's through Congress or um, you know, through the conferences or whatever that looks like. But you know, we got to continue to play the game right now and uh, we'll do that. But uh, you know, hopefully long term, we can find a little more uniform solution. Now you guys have implemented a program here, Next Level to kind of help these student athletes navigate through the waters, the uncertain waters a lot of times uh, of NIL. How would you describe that maybe Next Level it sets itself apart from other programs like it? Well, I think if you look across the SEC and, and really Power Five, you know, most, most athletics departments have something similar. Um, and, and we were actually doing a lot of that even pre-NIL, you know, a lot of uh, kind of career development type stuff. And, um, but you know, now it comes down to simple things like you know, you're getting a name, image, and likeness deal. Well, you have to pay taxes. You know, so we're we're talking to them about just you know life things that you know on April fifteenth you don't want to show up with with no money to pay your your taxes. And so um, I just think you know educating the student athletes. I mean, at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. We want them again to win and compete and do all those things. But we want them to leave Ole Miss and and have a, a base and a, and a platform and a foundation for moving into the real world. Um, and in some ways, NIL has kind of you know, sped that up, has expedited that because we're teaching them now things that you know, maybe four or five years ago they wouldn't have had to, to worry about in college. And so you know, we, we try to you know, look at that kind of glass half full that, hey, we, now we have these opportunities through NIL to, to help these young people. So um, it's been good. And, and you know, what's interesting about NIL to me, and I, I say this all the time, I bet if we have about 425 student athletes, and I bet if you polled them, you know, 95% of them, maybe even higher, are very happy with their experience. They, they love the fact that they're at Ole Miss getting to compete, getting a scholarship, you know, getting the things. Um, NIL is, is kind of a cherry on top, and we've got to continue to tweak it and, and make sure that, that, it, that it continues to grow and get better. Um, but our student athletes love it. You know, they love to compete, and we love to give them those opportunities. I've always wanted to ask you this since NIL came into fruition. If NIL, if it were around when you were a basketball star here, you're already grinning. I'm wondering if you've thought about this. What kind of NIL deal would you have wanted? I mean, you love outdoors, you know, hunting and fishing. Would it have been something maybe tied to, a, I don't know, Bass Pro Shop or something like that maybe? What, what kind of deal would you have wanted? Yeah, I mean, my, my favorite two stores in Oxford are uh, the Tractor Supply and the, the Farm Supply, and they're actually right across the street from each other. So I probably would have gone straight to those two, knocked on the door and said, hey, what can I, what can I get, you know? Um, but you know, I, I do think that that's cool. And we see that with our student athletes here is, is they find those things that are personal and mean things to them. And, and um, that's what makes me feel great about NIL is when there's a deal that's done that fits both parties. You know, and you see some of this stuff and it, it comes out and the student athlete is the perfect fit for that product. Um, that's what it's all about. You see it in the pros. I mean, that's, that's kind of the same thing. So um, it would have been fun to see, you know, what, what it would have been like back in the day. But in, in some ways, I'm, I'm glad that it, it wasn't around and, and things were a little, you know, not quite as intense and, uh, and complex. <laughs> so we get past the COVID year. We get into 2021. And in May of 2021, it's time to throw the confetti a little bit, right? Uh, the women's golf team, national champs. Uh, what was it like for you as athletic director? I mean, you're barely, what, at this point, 13, 18 months, something like that on the job. You're going to celebrate a national championship with the women's golf team. What, what was that moment like? Well, that was great. Um, you know, that, that group of young ladies was a very special group, and Coach Hinkus um, did a great job with that team. And, you know, just like every sport um, really that you think about in, in teams that win national championship, they get hot at the right time. You know, and our, our young ladies, you know, that year the regional was an interesting situation because they played in Baton Rouge, but it got rained out. 
and because they were one of the top two seeds, they were able to advance to the next round. Um, so they really didn't play in the regional, and then they went out to, to you know, Phoenix and, uh, and just played great. And I was fortunate enough to be able to be there for almost all of it. Uh, I was there the day that we won the championship against Oklahoma State. And so um, just a lot of fun. And to see, you know, we had a couple of those, those girls that came back. They'd already graduated. They came back because they felt like they could win a national championship. Uh, and they did. And it just, it really was a cool thing for our department too, because when they brought that trophy back, um, I could see it in our other coaches' eyes and our other student athletes' eyes, like, hey, we, we want one of those. You know, we want to compete and win one of those. And so it, it, we, they kind of put the peer pressure on each other at that point. And I think that's why we've had so much success over the past couple of years is because, you know, everybody wants to win at that high level and, and saw how much fun that was. So, um, you know, we're hoping for more of those in the future. And, uh, but it was really cool for Coach Inkus and, and the young ladies. There were two ceremonies that year that, that I really – I know you felt were important to Ole Miss Athletics, and I know a lot of Rebel Nation felt the same way. In May of 21, uh, the statue ceremony for Coolidge Ball, one of the most nice, genuine, humble human beings you'll ever meet, of course, basketball legend here at Ole Miss. We were fortunate to be there that day for the, for the ceremony. And then in October that year, the LSU game, Mr. Clutch, Eli Manning, uh, you guys retire his jersey, his number 10 jersey. Those two occasions were very important for Ole Miss Athletics. I'm curious, uh, through your eyes, how cool it was to, to be a part of both of those. Well, you know, th things like that and in, in our, our jobs, AD's jobs are really complicated and, and hard. I mean, just to be honest, there's a lot of really tough things we work through, a lot of things that are behind the scenes that people never know or see and, and never will. Um, but when you get to do things like that, it makes it all worth it. It really does. I, I just remember uh, I was the one that was able to call Coolidge and let him know that we were going to do this. Um, and as you mentioned, just the most humble and gracious um, gentleman, you know, that you'll, you'll ever be around. Uh, just a great man. And uh, to be able to do that for him and put that statue there in front of the pavilion that'll be there forever, um, you know, it's just awesome. And, and that's what it's all about, to celebrate 50 years of him being the first African-American scholarship student athlete at Ole Miss. Um, it says a lot. It says a lot. And, and he endured a lot, you know. And, um, really was the trailblazer for so many young people to have opportunities, which is, which is really neat. Uh, and then obviously, what, what do you say about Eli? You know, I mean, you know, we're sitting here in the Manning room right now and um, great career, um, great ambassador, you know, the Manning family in general. But, you know, Eli, you think about what Eli did here in the early 2000s, not only on the football field, but that's when Oxford exploded. You know, that's when people started buying condos and second homes and People started retiring here and, and doing all those things, and so um, a no-brainer to, to put his you know his number up there. And um, that LSU game, we we had a reunion of, of his teammates and some younger football guys, which is really really fun. And then you know for him to be able to get out there and be able to say a few words in front of sixty-five thousand people, um, that's what it's all about. The day was perfect. You know, you, you uh, came on the podcast. I think it was the the following week uh, with me, and we talked about how perfect it was. A postcard day. And you had made this statement that Ole Miss fans have waited a long time for, for this day, for this kind of day. And you mentioned a story to me. I, I hope you remember it. You walked up to Eli. He was waiting in the tunnel to walk out for the ceremony. And he was just kind of standing there. And you walked up and just kind of gave him a little pep talk. Do you, you remember that story? I do. And, and you know, again, Eli is, is such a great guy and, and a humble guy, just like the rest of, of the Mannings. And, um We'd done all the pageantry. We'd done the events the night before. We'd done the pictures and all those things. And they were doing the read basically for him to, to walk out. And I just happened to look over there and he was just, for the first time all weekend, he was just standing by himself. His kids weren't around him, his wife, family. You know, nobody was asking for an autograph. And I just slipped over and said, hey, you know, soak this in. Enjoy it, man, you deserve it. And um, he, he was he was so humble, and again, perfect remarks when he when he walked out there, and um, just really cool to to do that that day. You fast forward to 2022, and that baseball season was tough. It was tough for a lot of reasons. You and I had some conversations about that, and it was just I can't imagine how tough it was for you during that during that season. But I'm curious, how did you deal with those low moments? You know, because there was a lot of criticism flying around the baseball program. I'm sure, you know, from the cheap seats, you know, you had some some remarks and some opinions, you know. How do you how did you deal with that during that baseball season? Well, first I didn't look at any Twitter mentions. Uh, just just shut those out for a while. 
Um, you know, it was one of those things. We got off to such a great start that year. We're number one in the country, you know, early in the season. Uh, and, and you're thinking in your mind, okay, this, this, is, this is what it's supposed to be. This is how it's supposed to look. The year before, we had had a tough, you know, series loss with, with uh, Arizona. Um, and, you know, those, those guys came back, Kevin and Tim and Justin and, you know, some of those guys that came back. And, again, like the, the, the women's golf team, they came back because we want to win a national championship. We feel like we can do that. And, you know, it just went south. You know, in and, and, and baseball, I think more than any other sport, when, it, when it's going well, it can go well, but when it's going bad, it, it, it's contagious. And, you know, we were, we were losing games anyway. You could lose a game. You know, <laughs> there was just, we, we were, it was bad luck. We, we just weren't catching any breaks. Um, but being around the team, you know, in the leadership of guys like Tim and, and those guys, and obviously Coach B has been doing it for a long time, you never felt like those guys were going out there and not giving effort. And I don't think they ever went on the field thinking they couldn't win, you know, every game. And finally, you know, some things started going our way. We get on a little win streak and, um, you know, nose our way into the tournament, literally the last team to get in. Um, but I, I, I saw a clear shift in the team at that announcement when they saw that they were in the tournament because they had been fighting that uphill battle for two, two and a half months. You know, they had to win every game, you know, just to get a position to be in the tournament. Once they got in, they're like, hey, we're on level playing ground now, and we know we're good. You know, we, we know that we're, we're a good team. We know that we can go compete with anybody, and they did. And it was just so much fun. I was able to take my, uh, my youngest son down to Miami for the regional. I took my daughter to Hattiesburg for the super regional, and then the whole Carter group, you know, basically became residents in Omaha for about 12 days. Um, but it was just really fun, and, and I just remember um, you know, going down to the field after winning and just you know, having a lot of emotion, honestly, because um, I, I know with Coach B and the staff, I know what they were hearing, I know what they were dealing with, and you know, just to be able to go out there and, and win it and just kind of slam the door on a, on a national championship, I was so happy for, for them. You mentioned last time we talked about the scrutiny that people in your position face and if I remember how you phrased it correctly, basically it's, you know, a lot of times the family of the person, they're more affected than the person themselves. In this case, you. It's got to be difficult to be in your position and for your family sometimes to hear, because you're going to get criticism, even when it's unwarranted, you're going to get it. How difficult has that been for your family, you know, with you being in your position and how they dealt with it, with, with you being athletic director here? Yeah, that, that's been tough at times. Um, you know, I think overall it's been it's been pretty positive. You know, we've had some success, and um, you know, when, when you're winning, everybody's pretty happy. Um, but there's been some things along the way that you know, I'll get a text from my wife. She saw something on social media, or you know, kids will say something to ours at school, or things like that. And, and it's not just me; it's our coaches. I mean, it's um, when you're in a high profile position and in a small town I mean that you know you, you hear things and and now too with social media as we've mentioned a bunch um, everybody has a platform to get behind their keyboard and just tell you how to do your job and what decisions to make and, and how much of an idiot you are um, but it, it is tough and, and I think for me you know, having been an athlete you kind of develop thick skin you kind of move on to the next thing and um, for me I just I know in my heart that I'm going to make decisions that I feel are best for Ole Miss. And it's not going to make everybody happy, um, but it helps me sleep at night to know that, hey, it may not be the most popular choice, but in my heart, in my mind, um, I did that because I think it was the best choice. It was the best option. Um, but it is, it is tough on the, on the families at times. And, and you know, there, there's times when on a Friday night or a Saturday night, um, you know, I'd rather just stay at home. You know, I'd rather just grill steak and, and stay at home and sit by the pool or whatever. Um, because you need a little bit of that that break and a little bit of a refuge from time to time. But uh, you know, you develop your close friends, your close circle, and uh, you know, know those people are behind you. And um, you know, that's that's how you get through it. And uh, but sometimes I think the employee, the coach, the AD has to do a little bit of Dr. Phil with the family at time, just to say, hey, don't worry about that. We're gonna we're gonna move forward. Don't go anywhere. Audible's returns in a moment here on the Spirit Media Network.
When life is unpredictable, choose Express Care Summerall to get the medical help you need. We're the only clinic in Summerall open seven days a week. We also offer the convenience of drive through accessibility and walk-ins with no appointment necessary. Our nurse practitioners, Sarah Don Locke and Kobe Smith, welcome you to our location on Highway 42 next to Fox's Pizza. Find your new primary care provider, Express Care Summerall, where your health care matters. owned and operated since 1986, Lakeside Molding has become the trusted source of architectural products throughout the South. They offer fine interior architectural moldings, custom millwork, and cabinet doors designed and handcrafted in Flowood. Their showroom on Lakeland Drive is stocked with today's most sought-after interior details, including corbels, post, fireplace mantles, bath vanities, mirrors, and much more. Tim Shoemaker and his staff work closely to meet client needs for new construction, restoration, and remodeling projects. Lakeside Molding, where details make the difference. Wendy's new breakfast two for three is so good, the crew is giving every combination code names. I got that sauce biscuit and some tay tays. More formally known as sausage biscuit and small seasoned potatoes. Bis squared. Egg and cheese biscuit and sausage biscuit. Two biscuits. I'm impressed Tyler knew what squaring was. Cup of dub java. It's two coffees. Cup of dub java. No matter what you call it, Wendy's breakfast is that breakfast. Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's new two for three dollar piggy bundles. Yeah, a lot of times it comes from what a Twitter account that's like says something like Tim zero two four nine. You can't listen to people like that. You need to start doing what I tell them: get some more followers, become more interesting. And then maybe you'll get a reply. That's what you're, you're too nice. You, I don't think you'd say anything like that. If I'm doing the math right, I'm going to read this to you here. Two NCAA titles in just 13 months of you being on the job at the time. Women's golf in 2021, May of 2021, baseball in June of 2022. Not to mention you talked about besting your previous Learfield Directors Cup ranking of number 22, going as high as number 20 the highest ever for a school from the state of Mississippi. Here's a neat timeline, that, and I hope I did the math right on this. The women's golf national title came just 18 months after you were named full-time athletic director. The baseball natty came just, again, really about 13 months after the women's golf title. So those are two national championships, and really, in, in, those, main, in those sports, we could talk about you know cheerleading and others too, but you've got all these national championships within a very short window of you being on the job as athletic director. What, what comes to your mind when you hear that? Well, right place at the right time. Yeah. You know, I, I think that, you know, I, I didn't hire Coach Hinkus. I didn't hire Coach Bianco. Um, I think we do support them at a really high level. Uh, we, we give them an opportunity to have the resources to, to go do that. We talk about it. You know, I think if you don't talk about winning championships, SEC championships and national championships, you can't do it. And so we're, we're honest and, you know, we want to win them. And um, I think, you know, some of that and that mentality of we can do this here, why not us at Ole Miss? Um, that's been a part of our, you know, our culture and, and all those things. But, you know, to win a national championship, there's so many people involved. Um, you know, there's so many people that, you know, are involved in, in hiring and, you know, the trainers and the managers and the strength coaches and the fans. and. And everybody. So, you know, I was just, I just happened to be the AD sitting in the chair when, when we did that. But um, I do think that because we did that and because we talk about that, I think we're going to see more in the future because that's, that's what we want to do. We want to compete and win. I think a lot about the story you told me in our last interview about how close you were to signing with Arkansas State. And basically, a phone call from Ole Miss kind of changed really the path of your entire life at this point. You know, then you come to Ole Miss, basketball star here under Rob, uh, Rob Evans, and eventually Coach Barnes had a, a good run here at Ole Miss. And now you're the athletic director at Ole Miss. I mean, you were this close to not ever ending up at Ole Miss. 
you, you got to reflect on that time to time. I would think, as we talked about, there, there's definitely a divine a divine plan here at play. Yeah, I think about it often. Um, you know, you just you look at your three kids and your wife, and you know, if if you make a different decision, you know, those those four people aren't in your life. You know, and um, sometimes I'll be at a big Ole Miss event, and I'll just kind of look around and be like, wow, you know, this is. This is amazing, and, and you know it just shows you that that the good Lord has much bigger plans than than you can even dream of, uh, you know yourself. So um, we're very blessed, um, you know, to to not know anything about Ole Miss growing up, and to now be in the role that I'm in. Um, you know, I'm just I'm very humbled and um, love it here. Want to work really hard to make this place great, and um, you know this is a, a special place. I've been given this opportunity, and who knows why, but um, but I, I feel like we're here for a reason. Speaking of basketball, you made a, a big hire here recently for men's basketball, Chris Beard. So for you, what moved him from candidate to, to hire? Well, you know, obviously, you know, Coach Beard was dealing with an off the court issue um, during the time that we were we were making our hire. And, and so we had to make sure we did a lot of due diligence. We, we vetted everything out, which which we felt, you know, early on in that process, we got to where we felt very comfortable and confident in, in what was going on there. Um, from a basketball perspective, you know, it really was a no-brainer. You know, honestly, we probably don't get even mentioned in the same breath as him as a head coach unless he did have, you know, the issue. Um, but again, things happen for a reason, and, and, and he's here. But uh, we knew from a basketball perspective that, you know, he was, he was the guy. And, and I truly believe he's one of the top five coaches in all the country. Um, you know, he's, he's done some incredible things since he's been here already with our, our staff and our roster. And you go watch one of his practices and you just see why he's different. I mean, he, he gets it. I think he's one of the best CEO coaches I've ever been around. He's great on the court, you know, great coach, great X's and O's, great motivator, great recruiter. Um, but I love the, what he does just overall in his program and, and how he runs it. So, um, you know, I think for us at Ole Miss to get a guy like Chris Beard, uh, we're very lucky. And, um, he's been great, and we look forward again. We keep coming back to this theme, but you know, winning championships, I think he's going to have us right there you know, talking about that pretty soon. Before the interview started, we were talking off air about you know, how active your, your kids keep you. And uh, we talked about that last time we sat down, too, about how all the different activities that, that they're plugged into. I've wanted to ask you this for a long time. What, what are you like, the dad, Keith Carter, the dad, at a little league baseball game or, or a football game or, or any sporting event? Are you a yeller, a, a pacer, or you just kind of go sit away from everybody? Like, what, what are you like? Yeah, um, it, it's, it's a different answer for different kids. Uh, my, my first son, who will be a freshman at Ole Miss this year, when he was kind of seven U through whatever, um, I was pretty intense. Um, you know, umpires never made a right call. Um, you know, what are the coaches doing? You know, all this stuff. Um, but I think with my daughter and then now my younger son, um, I've learned a lot. And, you know, I think that I'm a little more mature. I think my younger son will appreciate that. Um, but, I, you know, I, I'm a competitor, you know, and for me, it's um, you know, whether I'm at an Ole Miss event or whether I'm at one of my kids' events, like, I want to win. You know, I want to win. And um, when we're not doing everything, you're not going to win every game, but when you're not doing everything, you, know, you possibly can to win or the fundamentals aren't there or maybe the umpire made a bad call um, you know I want to I want to compete at all times but it's been it's been interesting um, because I, I feel a lot of the times about our Ole Miss student athletes very similar to the way I feel about my own kids you know I, you, you recruit them you watch them grow up from 18 to 22 23 um, you know you want the best for them and you know you just want to do everything you possibly can to put them in the best position to have a great experience and win, but uh, yeah, I, I, I've had some moments that I'm, I'm not proud of as a as a as a travel you know travel ball dad or whatever. But uh, hopefully, hopefully it's a little better now. Yeah, that fire still burns, doesn't it? You, you were always a competitor. Don't go anywhere. Audible's returns in a moment here on the Spirit Media Network. When life is unpredictable, choose Express Care Summerall to get the medical help you need. We're the only clinic in Summerall open seven days a week. We also offer the convenience of drive through accessibility and walk-ins with no appointment necessary. Our nurse practitioners Sarah Don Locke and Kobe Smith welcome you to our location on Highway 42 next to Fox's Pizza. Find your new primary care provider, Express Care Summerall, where your health care matters.
Wendy's new breakfast two for three is so good, the crew is giving every combination code names. I got that sauce biscuit and some Tay Tays. More formally known as sausage biscuit and small seasoned potatoes. Bis squared. Egg and cheese biscuit and sausage biscuit. Two biscuits. I'm impressed Tyler knew what squaring was. Cup of double java. It's two coffees. Cup of double java. No matter what you call it, Wendy's breakfast is that breakfast. Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's new two for three dollar piggy bundles. Quality of life is about lifelong care. Your family's health care is important to you, and that's important to us. King's Daughters Medical Center is here for your family in every stage of life, from the excited new parents, adolescent and teen years, to the big day. Walking alongside of you in life's journey, living a healthier life. KDMC, caring for our community like no one else can. Family owned and operated since 1986, Lakeside Molding has become the trusted source of architectural products throughout the South. They offer fine interior architectural moldings, custom millwork, and cabinet doors designed and handcrafted in Flowood. Their showroom on Lakeland Drive is stocked with today's most sought after interior details, including corbels, posts, fireplace mantles, bath vanities, mirrors, and much more. Tim Shoemaker and his staff work closely to meet client needs for new construction, restoration, and remodeling projects. Lakeside Molding, where details make the difference. For those on the go, we give you Audibles with Jason Scarborough, the podcast. What are we listening to? Are we listening to a playlist? Are we listening to a podcast? What a great question. Listen to our intimate interviews with guests on your favorite podcast platforms, including iTunes, Google Play, Amazon Music, Spotify, TuneIn Radio, and so many more. Do you ever look back and say, you know, my life, the story could have ended up differently had it not been for your grandparents? In incredibly uh, different, yeah. for sure. Plus, you'll hear behind-the-scenes commentary on each guest, interview preparation, location, and so much more from Jason himself. Do you have a, uh, a favorite Coach Bowden story uh, that you can share with us? I can tell you this. What you see with Bobby Bowden is what you get. Mm. Check out Audibles with Jason Scarborough, the podcast, on any of these popular podcast locations and hit subscribe, download, and enjoy. Now, back to the show. We talked a lot about your faith last time we sat down. You were maybe, what, seven or eight months maybe into the job at that time. So how important a role does faith play in the life of Keith Carter, both as an athletic director and, and when you clock out for the day? Well, I think that it, it has to drive it, you know. Um, and, and, you know, I, I don't want to you, – you walk a little bit of a balance being the AD at a public institution. You have to, you know, kind of watch what you're doing from time to time. Our FCA program is, is really strong here, and we're very supportive of that. Um, you know, other campus ministries that are great. Um, we're active members at Pine Lake uh, here in Oxford um, and, and really enjoy that with our family. But, you know, I think you have to have that in your life if you want to, if you want to, if you want to have that balance and you want to have the, um, just the freedom, you know, of, of being able to go through every day. And I mentioned, you know, making some of those hard decisions. Um, you know, if you don't have some higher, you know, being a, a person that you can go to and, and, and ask for advice and do those type of things, um, it's hard, you know, the, the, this life is hard. So um, we try to make sure that we continue to, to put God first and, um, you know, don't always do the best job of that, but uh, we all make mistakes. But I think it's really important in, in what we do here on campus and, and certainly in our, in our home. You were just talking about your family, just mentioned them here. How important has your family been to you on this journey? as athletic director? Well, it's been fantastic. And, you know, they've loved it from a lot of, you know, they get a lot of perks and a lot of access and, and a lot of different things. I mentioned the trips that we went on during the, the Super Regional and the Regionals. Um, but, you know, what, what I've really learned and what my, my wife and I really learned is that in this job, people talk a lot about work-life balance. I don't think that really exists. I think you have to just figure out a way. It's a, it's a lifestyle. You know, and for us, it's like when we want to see each other, we're probably at an Ole Miss baseball game or an Ole Miss women's basketball game or, you know, whatever. And especially with kids having activities and sports and school and all that, you know, it's hard for us to find a, you know, a night to go to dinner. Um, so we do it at the baseball game or at the basketball game or whatever. So we really had some great, you know, trips, bowl games, you know, away football games, obviously the Omaha 
you know, travel, the, the women's Sweet 16, a lot, a lot of different stuff where we just as a family have enjoyed Ole Miss athletics and doing it all together. Um, but they've been a, a great support system for me. Um, I, try to, I try my best not to bring work home. Um, at times when you, when you do that, though, you, you're a little distant, you know, because you're still thinking about it when you probably should just be telling you know, some of this stuff to get it off your chest a little bit, but I, I want to protect them. I don't want them to know all the stuff that I'm having to deal with and, um, you know, things that, that they'll never know that we mentioned before, but uh, they've been a, a great support system and a, and a big rock for me to, to lean on for sure. One of the last times we talked to the playlist on your phone was called Keith's Jams, right? Is it still Keith's Jams? I actually have a, one now called Keith's New Jams. Oh, yeah. now what's on this one? All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go into this. Um, I'm going to be very confident in it. Um, it's Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift. Lane got you on that, did he not? Yeah. My daughter, um, for her 17th birthday, we surprised her and flew to Minneapolis and watched Taylor, a Taylor Swift concert, wow. and it was fantastic. And, and I think that the reason I like it so much is because she and I had such a great time at the concert. And... Um, so I've been listening to a lot of Taylor Swift. I'm still a bro country guy. You know, I, I like, I'm country to the core, uh, but probably the addition has been Taylor Swift. And uh, we're even talking about potentially trying to go to another concert at some point. Is any Tracy Lawrence still on the, the playlist? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the old school when, you know, when you really need to get down to the nuts and bolts of, of who you are and, you know, a Saturday morning, you know, driving around, that's when you, you kick on the Tracy Lawrence and, and the old school 80s stuff. But um, some of the new stuff is good too. Ole Miss became the first uh, college football program to implement mental health training this off season. So kudos on that. I know you're proud of that fact. How would you describe how this elevates the football staff? And I guess a follow up to that is: is this going to be something that is done throughout Ole Miss athletics? Yeah, we're we're actually working through that. Uh, I would say most of our our staff has done the training. I've got to do mine actually next week. Um, but Coach Kiffin jumped in right away and said, hey, we're going to do this. And it's a time constraint. I mean, there's, there's, I think it's an eight-hour day to do it. And, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a big training. Um, and those guys are busy, but it just shows how important it is. And I think, um, you know, you, you think about all the things that affect student-athletes. Um, you know, we talk about strength training and nutrition and academic support. And, you know, mental health support now is right there with, with it. And, I look back at when I was here, you know, whatever, 25 years ago, there's no social media, there's no cell phones, there's no instant, you know, real time, whatever. And, and now that a lot of these young people are dealing with, you know, some of the same things we we're talking about earlier, you know, the social media aspect, they come into the locker room after they don't play as well or whatever. And they've got, you know, a hundred messages saying, you know, you're terrible or whatever. Uh, mental health is a, is a really big deal. And I see it with my teenagers, you know, um, you know, it's a, it's a thing now that's a, a lot different than when we were growing up. So we have three full-time mental health, you know, specialists here that are booked from 7 a.m. till 6 p.m. I mean, they're, they're extra busy. We're trying to add to that in, in that program. Um, but I was really happy that Coach Kiffin and his staff, you know, jumped on that because it's really, really important. With football season here up on us, I'm curious what a typical game day, home game day, is like for Keith Carter from the time your feet hit the floor in the morning till the time your head hits the pillow at night. What what's the typical game day like for you? Well, I tell our staff all the time that we get seven opportunities each year, basically, and we have other sporting events, obviously. But those seven Saturdays are our biggest opportunity to showcase Ole Miss athletics. You know, you got people coming, uh, hundred thousand people here in Oxford between the Grove and the stadium, and uh, we want to get it right. We want to do things first class. And so we put a lot of effort into it, a lot of time and energy into making sure those Saturdays are really good. For me, uh, I usually get to campus about four or five hours before the game. Um, I usually have a list of people that I want to go see. I've got to do some interviews and different things pre-game. Um, we have donors on the field that I'll, I'll see you know, pre-game as well. But I'll, I'll try to get in the Grove and you know, see a few people there and, and walk around and, and just check on things. You know, by the time Saturday gets there for me, uh, I don't really have a lot of, you know, getting down in the weeds type of stuff. I mean, our staff does a fantastic job of, of making sure things are good. And if, if things pop up, they jump on it and, and fix them. Um, but it, you just want to be visible. You want to be visible. And, and I like to get in the locker room before the game, see the guys, and um, you can get out on the field. Um, I've, I, I've gotten into this thing that I have done the past couple of years. And when Mac Brown was here as our punter, uh, he was on the SAC, uh, the SAC Student Athlete Leadership Group, and we built a relationship. So I would catch, I would catch a punt before every game. 
Oh. Um, and some sometimes we would win, sometimes we would lose. So I'm not sure that it's uh, good luck or bad luck, but it's hard to catch a punt. I know that. <laughs> and so when you, when we see our punt returners out there and they they muff one, hey, give them a little get a little grace because it's not easy. But um, you know, just just try to be active and, and around and. You know, I think the role of the AD on a game day is just to be visible, you know, and, and make sure you can see as many people as possible. We host donors up in our, our skybox as well uh, and different people up there, dignitaries and, and, and special folks. So, um, again, those are those are seven very important Saturdays for us, and I want to make sure that I'm doing my part. When was the last time you picked up a basketball? Um, I haven't picked up a basketball in a competitive nature to, like, play pickup probably in over 10 years. I mean, I just – I don't – don't want to get injured and got enough of it when I was playing. Um, have played, you know, with my kids in the yard and, and different things. Um, we actually just took a trip to Italy with our family um, and went back over where we played for six years and saw some old friends. And we actually got to go back to one of our places that we played and we got in the gym there and, and shot around a little bit. So that was pretty cool to do. But, um, you know, I enjoy, obviously love basketball, but I, I'm enjoying it now through other people. Uh, I, just, I don't want to get out there and pop a hamstring or tear an Achilles or, or whatever that looks like. Were you a trash talker? I don't remember you being a trash talker when you played. You know, I think, I think there's an art in trash talking. Okay. Um, the answer to the question is yes. Okay. Uh, but I, I think it, trash talk was much better served when you hit them in the perfect moment. It wasn't this vocal yell in your face, you know, where you'd see it really a lot. Um, you had to really kind of watch. Um, but if you can get that perfect dig at the perfect time, uh, to me, that's the best trash talk. And so, um, you know, there, there's a little bit of that that happened. But, you know, again, I, I think that, you know, trash talk is a strong, strong way to look at it. But I, I think you've got to have that edge. When you get in between the lines, um, you have to have a different personality that, that is competitive and you know, isn't going to lose. And sometimes that manifests it into things that, again, aren't, maybe you're not proud of all the time, but you, you have to have that edge about you that, um, that separates you. And so, you know, maybe sometimes the trash talk or some of the, some of the hard fouls or different things, you know, that's just part of it. But um, I think that's something you got to have if you want to be a successful athlete. My final question for you, the last time we sat down, you talked about feeling like you'd come full circle in so many ways from Perryville, Arkansas, coming to Ole Miss as a basketball recruit, ended up as a basketball star. You worked within the Ole Miss, I guess you could say, administration before moving up into athletics and eventually as athletic director. You talked about feeling like you'd come full circle. I'm curious, you filled the circle nicely, by the way, but what chapters would you like to still write in Keith Carter's story? Well, I think there's a lot to still write. And you know, professionally, personally, um, you know, we've got a different season of life in our own household where one of our children is leaving to go to college and, um, you know, just a lot of different emotions and things around that. Um, but I think here at Ole Miss in athletics, we still have a lot of work to do. We've done some really cool stuff, um, but I think we're just getting started. Uh, we're building facilities. We're, you know, doing different things there. We're working on NIL. We, you know, we've got coaches that are in their third and fourth and fifth years that are really starting to get their stride in their programs and, and taking them to the next level. So um, I'm excited about it. You know, we, we've got a great staff. Um, I hired a, a, a guy named Alan Green that's my senior deputy. Uh, he was the athletics director at Auburn for a few years, and he's brought a, a new level here of, of leadership, which is fantastic. But our, our staff is great. I think we've got all the pieces in place to, to do some really cool things. And I think we're all energized. You know, I think post COVID and you're getting some of that behind us and um, we're ready to, to get after it. And so, you know, I, I can't wait. You know, this is always an optimistic time of year. We're all undefeated right now. Um, but I think after last year, you know, we had a little bit of a down year overall. I think we're not only us as a staff, but our coaches, our student athletes are really motivated to, uh, to have a great year this year. I want to thank you. You know, since the first time we met, I, I feel like I feel like we've become friends. I think I can say that on camera. And uh, you've always been so gracious with your time. Anytime we, that we need something, uh, you deliver. And I appreciate that. I know Ole Miss appreciates you. And uh, maybe we'll do part three down the road. I always appreciate you sitting down with us. Absolutely. Enjoyed it. We'll, we'll sprinkle in some, some personal stuff. You know, I got to do that. Yeah. So. Uh, Let me double check and I'll be ready. That's a great question. It is a great question. That's a yep. wonderful question, Matthew. It would always be good to record.
Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week for another episode of Audibles with Jason Scarborough.